JC News, St. John Church News. Here's your anchor, Sandra Dorsey. Good morning. Welcome to today's edition of SJC News. We are expecting greater here at St. John, and a key element in that is ensuring that you are informed, connected, and spreading the word. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. We are celebrating Pentecost this morning, St. John. Let us all invite and welcome the Holy Ghost into our personal space. God is preparing to do extraordinary things in our lives. Whoever serves is to do so as one who serves by the strength which God abundantly supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified. This week, St. John has been asked to host and support the six districts post planning meeting. Our campus will graciously open its doors to host a few activities on Wednesday, May 31st. Our pastor, Dr. Washington, will share what is expected of our campus during our 11 a.m. in-person worship. So please join us today. Let us support our district, our pastor, and church during the next week. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let us remember to lift those families that are in need of prayer this week. We ask that you pray for Brother Nathaniel Bernard, who lost his brother this past week, as well as the bereaved family. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Let us not forget to finish this month, St. John, trusting God with our finances through our tithes and offering on today. Try him at his word. God is able to pull us through. That concludes today's edition of SJC News. Be informed, stay connected, and spread the word. Now here's Donya Albright. Greetings, St. John family, and welcome to today's virtual worship experience. Please be reminded that members of the finance team will be here today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive your tithes and offerings. You may also take advantage of use of our cash app. Please be reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. And now let us be blessed with a word from our pastor, Reverend Washington. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are so glad to have you worship virtually with us on today. Let me say that I'm thankful to have you welcome and worship with us today. And I welcome you and I worship with you. And I'm so thankful that you've chosen to celebrate with us on this special Memorial Weekend. We give God thanks to those who are willing to sacrifice their life and the legacy to protect and to honor those of us who are yet still here. So for those persons, we honor you, we salute you and the life that you gave. And we salute you for your willingness to fight for those who could not fight for themselves. And if you are a family member of one of those persons, let me invite you to receive this warm and thoughtful welcome. We remember you and we thank your loved one for being what we could not be at that time. Let me invite you this morning to celebrate with us. It's Pentecost and we celebrate on this day the amazing way that God moves. We have been preparing for this moment for 50 days and today is day 50 and we begin preparation for what God has for us in this 50th day and 50th day season. Let me invite you to pray with me as we prepare to hear from God. Thank you, Lord, for this special day. We just honor you and we make ourselves available to your manifestation of what you want for us to do. This day, we ask you to speak to us. And as you speak, we will listen to you. Bless us, O oh Lord, breathe upon us and allow us to be strengthened by your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 
Thank you so much for tuning your heart to pray and to prepare. There is a word for us on Pentecost. It comes from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, I invite you to verses 1 through verse number 4. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Hear God speak at this time to your circumstance and to mine. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It was violent and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them ability. Amen. This morning, I want to invite you just for a few moments to join me and think with me and pray with me and believe with me, okay? Believe with me on this subject, the power and purpose of Pentecost in your life. The power and purpose of Pentecost in your life. It's Pentecost, a day that is also just as valuable and important as Christmas and Easter. Beloved, there are three major days in the Christian calendar and the lifestyle of a Christian. Three days that Christians must always honor, celebrate, and affirm. Three days that are essential to the life of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Why do you listen to this? broadcast each week. Why are you tuned in? Because hopefully you desire to become better at serving God through the lifestyle of a Christian. I pray that each one of you joins me in making a decision every week that this broadcast will enhance you, will build you, and will make you the better because you've listened and because you're on the road to becoming, as Jesus says, wonderfully, fearfully, and didactically made in the imagery of God. I want to encourage you this morning that if you are serving God through the lifestyle of Christianity, then Pentecost must be celebrated. It is not something that we don't acknowledge, and we just don't acknowledge it, beloved, by saying it's Pentecost, but we acknowledge it by making a statement on this day. You see, the Christian calendar deserves to be acknowledged in your life and in mine. If we're believers of Christ and followers of Jesus's lifestyle, we've got to start acknowledging the very things that are important to him. Beloved, Christmas is the start of the major day. Then there is Easter, Resurrection Sunday. But there is one more that comes 50 days after the resurrection. It's that which we recognize today, and that is Pentecost. It is important because as Christmas gave birth to Jesus Christ. As resurrection gave Jesus Christ victory over the sin of our life and the sins of humanity and gave Jesus the power to be raised from the dead, which is what we celebrate on Resurrection Day 4, then what does Pentecost do for you and I? I want to build this for you. I want to take time because it's essential that if you believe in Jesus Christ and are a follower of the Christian faith, you need to know the value, the importance, the purpose of Pentecost in your life. Pentecost is so valuable to you that God separated it from the resurrection 50 days later. It took 50 days. We've been listening. We've been here. You've been hearing God speak to us each week. We have taken 50 days to prepare for this very moment. And I've called that period the Easter tide in Bible study and in preaching moments where we have decided that we would face everything in order to fix something so we would be prepared for the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is here and it's a vital to the lifestyle of your following God. Why did you prepare? What did you work on in the 50 day period? Can I tell you biblically that the disciples, the followers of Jesus from that particular period in the life of Christ, those disciples, those who looked to him for everything, can I tell you that what was so powerful is in that 50 day period, Jesus appeared to them a number of times. He appeared to them preparing them for this very moment. The Lord knew that he would physically not be able to be with them any longer. And so he prepared them for the great 
greater responsibility. Let me pause, put down a hermeneutical and exegetical kickstand to let you know whenever God is preparing you for the next moment, whenever God is preparing you and building you and getting you ready, you need to be clear that it will be greater than anything you've ever seen. And so let me say to you this morning that right now you may have gone through the last period 50 days the Eastertide season, suffering, worried, in the dark. I want you to know something. Have you ever seen a seed grow on top of the ground? No, seeds have to be buried. And as they are buried, they are watered, they are prepared, and they are building until they burst through on dry ground, get this, and produce what they were, what they were made to produce while in the dirt. You missed it. I want you to understand that God has kept us in periods of development like that seed underground, preparing us so that when the Pentecost day would come, we would give birth to that which God has given us on the inside, down in the dirty, murky, miry circumstances. I, I just want to tell you that maybe you are now in the dirt. Maybe the life that you want is nothing like the life that you're experiencing. Maybe the job, uh, the career choice and the, the situation, the relationship is nothing like you imagined for your life. And I pray that you aren't just wanting convenience and comfort, but I pray you want something more than that. And maybe that's why you were in the dark, because God is preparing. Watch this. The gift that has been deposited into you and it needed to be prepared. I, I've learned this some seasons in our life. God will hide us in seasons of preparation. Some seasons, God will take you away from the limelight, from being out front to develop you and nurture you in such a way that when the light comes back on you, you are prepared no matter what the test may be. What am I saying? The disciples were being prepared for something greater than they were in the darkness for. They had never seen what they are gonna see from this day forward. So Pentecost has a purpose and it has power as God has been preparing you for this moment. Pentecost is the day that the church recognizes that God equips those who are prepared to serve him, to do what God has gifted you to do. Let me see if I can make it live. Pentecost is the day where you raise your hand and say, God, whatever you have as a will for my life, I'm gonna embrace it. And God says, I'm gonna breathe on you in such a way, get, get this, that whatever I want you to do, I'm giving you the power and the purpose to do it. It's where God situates you in such a way that your gifting mixes with something that has been known as the Holy Spirit in English, but in Greek, it's known as the parakletos, the paraclete, the helper, the one that assists you in doing the, watch this, the work of God in the world and in your life. I want you to know something. Beloved, you are not able to do God's work in your life and in the communities you live by yourself. That might be the issue that we are experiencing in our personal lives, that we have been trying to, to make visions and dreams come true by the intellect, by the physical stamina, and by the bodily and the resources that we have. But I've come today on Pentecost to tell you that God has power and purpose in this day to give you the equipment that you need to work on God's behalf and get this so that you might give God the glory. So you will never accomplish, I will never accomplish the deepest and wildest dreams of our life if we're only working from our own resources. The text testifies that on this day that they were all gathered together. I want to pause and give you just a little bit of what. Don't miss this. Remember, who wrote Acts? The same person who wrote Luke. Luke and Acts really should be read together. You should read Luke as volume one and Acts as volume two. And I want you to be encouraged today to understand that God writes your life in volumes. And sometimes your last volume needs to be read in preparation for this one. And God wrote Luke gospel to tell about the preparation for this, the book of Acts. What is it? Acts is the blueprint for how we live our life 
with Jesus in the spirit realm and no longer in the flesh realm. How do the disciples live? Well, first of all, it happens on Pentecost. The first thing is that they were all gathered together and while they were gathered together, something took place. I wanna pause and say to you that it was not some of the disciples. It was not some people, it was all. Those who were celebrating and affirming a lifestyle of faith had gathered together and something was going to happen. I want to pause and just by way of introduction, and I'm almost done because I'm not going into detail. I just want you to know the purpose and the power of Pentecost is to equip you in getting ready to do what God desires you to do. That's why you need a Pentecost experience. That's why 50 days is important because it sets you up to do what only God has been preparing you to do. You need a Pentecost experience because you don't understand that you are warring not against flesh and blood, but you're warring against principalities and powers in places that you cannot imagine. There is a war going on that seeks to keep you from glorifying God and that's why you are stuck and that's why you're heavy with depression and that's why you're struggling to see the end instead of the beginning. You can only see what you see because there's a a war going on that's trying to keep you from seeing, but I've come to tell you Pentecost gives birth to the Holy Spirit, the helper, the paracletos, the paraclete that's attempting to equip your life with what you need to move forward. That's it. I want you to have a great day. I just wanted to introduce this to you today. What is Pentecost? Pentecost is a day that 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God moves to equip those who follow Jesus for what God has for their life. If you are serious about elevation and about taking your life from just living to legacy, you need a Pentecost. The power of Pentecost is to equip you with what you and I can't do for self to create the legacy that God wants us to have. So wherever you are, if you want legacy and not just living, then you need Pentecost. And what is the purpose? I told you the power of it is to prepare you. The purpose of it is get this, so that God might get the glory out of everything you do. Pentecost has purpose and it has power for our life. And if you are following God for 50 days, God has been preparing you for 50 spiritual seasonal days. God has looked to develop you as that seed. And as you break the ground and come up for the world to see, Pentecost is the day that allows you to stand boldly in spite of what's against you. On that day, they were gathered together in the same place. I know some folk want to say, yeah, they were, they were gathered and they were there. And that's the power. No, the power is not in their presence, meaning the power is not in that they were together. The power doesn't come until God releases the Holy Spirit. They were to do God's will and not their own. And the truth is they were hiding because they were worried about being killed like Jesus had been killed. But it is when they come together under the guise of a godly call that God moves. Stop gathering together to do your stuff, but gather together to honor the ways of God. I'm out. I want you to have a great day. I want to encourage you to have a great week. I'll see you this week in Bible study. We'll delve into it more. But the purpose and the power of Pentecost is essential to you going to the next level. I want to encourage you, beloved, to go to the next level. But first, make sure you're going with the power and the purpose of Pentecost to blow your mind and to grow you for the kingdom of God. It's been a pleasure just to whet your appetite today. I pray that you have a great week. I pray that you will allow God to empower you. And I pray that you will allow God to give you purpose through Pentecost. I love you. God loves you. And I'll see you on Wednesday of this week.